Hello everyone for a new video. So this is the deck stacking Siege Blista totems, I guess you call this thing. Uh, I did not come up with this build. Someone from my um, cl our clan, even on Twitch, said I should start looking at the build. It's very interesting. We played it and it's actually a lot of fun. It's very good for clearing. It is it is on the glass cannon side though as a heads up in advance. If you don't like the playstyle, I recommend not playing this one. But it does kill bosses extremely fast, like Conquers under 15 seconds, Cyrus pretty well, Mastermind, done every boss in the game, Mavens. The only thing I haven't done with this boss is the Fear, because when I tried doing the Fear, I did it trying to go for the challenge, reducing, releasing them all at once, and that was an absolute mess. So it, probably, it can do the Fear, someone playing the same build with me just seven, six levels higher than me killed the Fear. It's just you just need levels. So it's pretty much deck stacking. You know, your whole entire build is all unique except for two rings, a belt, and gloves. Every other piece is a rare, is a unique. So it's very easy to get the build going. And we're pretty much sitting on 1664 decks. You do want to hit 16k with the decks just for the 16th totem. That's pretty much, and more decks, more damage. So pretty much with the build, you're pretty much running an Iron Commander uh, bow. I would recommend getting Calling Strike on this one as like a Scourge or a Krupp, whatever you can get. It, it just helps with certain bossing. But pretty much I was looking for was just the, because mine wasn't Corrupted, so I just pretty much tried to be a little picky with it. I went for like Totem Life, Totem Placement Speed, stuff like that. But if you went for Calling Strike, I would just get whatever you can. And then pretty much it's a Frost Bomb, Frenzy, GMP, Sniper Mark, Increase Crit Strike, and Cast on Crit. So pretty much your right your uh, Frenzy is pretty much the minute you hit a boss with Frenzy of Totems down, it implies the Sniper's Mark. Sometimes it takes like two. But once it, it has that Sniper's Mark, the Totems absolutely obliterate the boss super quick. We'll show you in the map showcase. You'll see me using it on um, the Conquers. But it pretty much takes care of the bossing. Frost Bomb, you rarely notice it's on there. It's a little bit minus cold res, but I you really uh, see it. And it's pretty much just to get the uh, Frenzy going quickly. Helmet, Fractal Thoughts. You want the Siege Blista attack speed on it just to increase your um, attack speed. And then pretty much, you know, if you can get like crit strike or something like that go for it but to be honest this was the only one in the market i could find for like 1.5 they're pretty cheap and it's pretty much a blood rage that i always forget to use to be honest with this build but blood rage uh gmp ensnaring arrow and mirage archer this is only for bossing pretty much so like on bosses you would hit them with the frenzy get the sniper's mark on them quickly and then just hit them with the snaring arrow to make them take more, um, to make them move less, do, and all that kind of stuff to make it a little bit easier for you. But, and then they also take more damage, but pretty much the scenario is only for bossing. And then Blood Rage, you can use it on your left click, because more totems you have gives you life regen, so you can sustain it pretty easily in maps. Bow, Hero's Demise, this is the upgraded version. Pretty much this gives you damage, you know, helps you with your, uh, gives you more attributes. Try to go for attribute roll if you can. Uh, Astromitis, perfect. I would go. Uh, mine's perfect world with the attribute modifier quality on it. Everything is pretty much attribute modifier quality. As a heads up, just because more decks, the be the better. And then pretty much shaman's dom um, domination is more crit for totems, which is the node. I forget if it's on the left side or right side. There it is. So it's this one right here. That's why you just want to anoint it because it's a lot of points away. Uh, chess piece, Hiram's Air. If you have the currency, go for plus two projectile. They're pretty cheap this league. I bought this for 4x. And I'm pretty sure now they're even cheaper. Unless we broke the trace site. Yeah, like 3.5 now. So it's a lot cheaper than what they used to be there. You can also get one that's not um, in this league. You can get one that's not linked and just link yourself with the tainted fusings real easily. Um, 
And then pretty much the chess piece is, you know, everything on here I have to awaken, so you definitely really don't need to awaken if you don't want to. It's just awaken equals a lot more damage from this build. So it's a really nice quality of life. Uh, elemental damage with attacks. You have your cold pen, cold damage, your inspiration support. You can definitely run the other versions. This is just extremely expensive. So this one works. Uh, anonymous Siege Blista, you want to get the Anonymous for this one. Just because it gives you, um, fires two additional projectiles. So, and when you also put that with one of the jewels on your tree, you get a lot of projectiles. And Hypothermia. You know, I put quality on it. It doesn't really... It gives you a, like a 4% extra increased chill duration. It's not really noticeable, to be honest. It was just get a 2020 or just get a 123 level to yourself. So I just went with this option. Uh, the boots, we'll do the rares class. Uh, the boots, they're the Gartharin flight, whatever you call this thing. They have pretty much movement speed. You know, I tried to, I went for a, a perfect dex roll for more dex. And then that was just lab enchant. This is what I just got. So I take reduced crit damage. This is whatever you can get pretty much. And it's pretty much cast damage taken set up with your Molten Shell for star ability. And then dash with second win. You can do, if you don't like dash, flame dash works just as well. And I'm hoping the quality works out with this build. I can see the internet's been really bad today. And then for the four rares, this is where you have to cram all your resistance in. Because you have no res on this build with all the rares, uniques. All your res comes from your pretty much four slots here. And your gloves is probably not going to have resistance on it because the gloves are pretty much dex, percent dex, and it's already two suffixes. So if you can get a third, if you can actually get a resistance on it, I would say you're lucky. I would also recommend don't craft this yourself. Buy it on the, buy it. I put in already almost 200, um, essence in on it it's the i think it's strout or something like that doubt uh that's strength this one i put roughly maybe around 150 i think i did shrieking on it just because it was a lot cheaper i used deafening for the other ones but we went shrieking on the gloves because the um, trying to hit the percent dex is also extremely difficult so i would recommend just buying on the market for like 2x it's a lot you'll save yourself a lot of time and then just try to get life on if you can. And the gloves. It's pretty much hate. It's pretty much all your auras. You know, hatred, your skitter bots, your bone chill for your skitter bots, and your enlighten. Enlighten is recommended because you can see you have no mana with this build already. I have 119 mana. A level two, you probably could get away with it. It's just going to be very uncomfortable with the mana. But just play with it how you need. If you need to drop something, go for it. But just, I would recommend just getting the light in. Level 3s are not bad corrupted. So for the belt, I would look for a synthesized belt with um, percent dex on it. It doesn't have to be leather. It be any of them. They're all the exact same. If you can, try to get one with like a, you know, like a close for a higher or... A higher level for a better resistant, but it's not going to be easy to get. They are going to be expensive. I think the base alone was 2x when I bought it. I'm pretty sure it's got to be the same. Uh, just take that off. Really? Mm, I think it's a 14 if I'm correct. Yeah, it's so like 2x for the base. It's not bad. And then when you get it, this is where I use the essence on it. If I could find, yeah. I use the essence to make sure I get the guaranteed decks. And then all I was looking for, life resistance, that's it. And I got pretty lucky with this one. They had a T1 life and a pretty good fire res. I, and I was able to craft another resistance on it. So I just kept it. It's really rare that you get an open suffix also. If on your build, you don't need the open suffix, you have an open prefix. You can craft increased elemental damage with attack skills for 32% more damage. 
it's more damage, but I need the resistance. So I just crafted over it. It fixed the resistance, so I was happy. Uh, then the two rings are your big resistance slaughters. You can go sapphire, you know, ruby, topaz, double resistant or um, two stone, whatever. Just do what you think's the best. And then you want to pretty much have an open prefix to uh, craft non-channeling skills because it does help you sustain this because your totems already co will cost you 18 and then your frenzy will cost you 14. Without this, they're going to cost, it's going to be really hard to sustain your mana. And it cuts your this down too. Uh, pretty much with this, all you're looking for is, you know, I use same thing, essences with attribute modifier, same with all of them. I was looking for just life and at least another resistance slot. I did hit at something else besides this one. I just didn't forgot about harvest, so I rolled over it. But pretty much use it to fix resistant and try to get life on it. And then the clockwork, the cogwork, this is pretty much where your big resistance is going to come from. Because the same thing, you know, essence. You want to try to get something like, oh, I got lucky on this one. You want to try to get like percent all res with a double or a single um, resistant on it and then life and then craft whichever one's missing. I got pretty lucky on this one. It's definitely needed a slot because this is pretty much 90% of resistance comes from is the ring. Because without the ring on, I have a 69, 60, and 25 with the ring on it, max it out. So it's definitely a, helps. Uh, slot does help a lot. Uh, flash setup, it's, you know, my flasks are not the best. You know, pretty much all mine are get charged when I get hit by an enemy because I get hit a lot. Not the best setup, but Corrupted Blood, um, if you don't have Corrupted Blood somewhere, Bleeding helps too. You know, Cast Speed for faster totems, Avoid Shock, Curses, more block. Do you need the block? No. It's just something that's there. And I'm going to talk about this right now. Since this, I'm not a higher level. I don't have the Cluster Jewel in yet. This ideally is what you're looking for for the Cluster Jewel. You're looking for um, Ancestral Echo for the totem placement speed. And increased attack and cast speed if you summon a totem recently. So more cast speed. And then Sleepless Sentry gives you 20% more duration, which is nice. But it also gives you a big one, which is you have Onslaught if you summon to totem recently. And the permanent on uh, Onslaught does help out a lot. Because without this, you only have it on kill. Skill tree. So, Hierotham, you know, Pursuit of Faith 1, 2, 3, then 4. You know, this get MOM, a little bit, doesn't really do a whole lot, just helps with mana. You know, this is a big resistance slot, gives you more resistance, more fizz damage. It's a nice to have. And then your usual totem setup. So, skill tree is a little bit goofy with this one. You know, you start over here, but you, you're more on the these two sides. So pretty much over here, you're going for the life, you know, resistance, damage. Down here, you have your fluid motion to convert all of these strength nodes, all of this, these ones, to decks for more decks. You can put Corrupted Blood on here, cannot be silenced, hinder, you know, whatever you want. You know, life. Resistance, resistance. If you do need the fire res, you, do, you can spend one point right here to get your fire res. And then right here is a brawn. I just went perfect on it. You don't need a perfect world. You know, I just look for like perfect decks on it, the most important. And if you can go strength intelligence, go for it. If not, it doesn't matter. You know, Mage Bane right here for decks provides no bonus evasion, but you get 1% spell suppression per 15 decks. And you have a shit ton of decks on this build, so it does help. Another jewel slot for Reign of Splinters. This is what gives you your totems another projectile. So they shoot about 3-4 projectiles per. And it does get pretty good once you start. And just try to go for at least the uh, lowest reduced totem damage you can. Uh, right here, this is the also with the Onslaught. Increase Onslaught effects. And then you have on champ percent chance of getting Onslaught and kill. This compared with the... Um, Cluster Jewel is a really nice buff. Right here you have um, pretty much a big cold damage with your Fizz converted to cold. This is your Cluster Jewel B. 
you know, point blank. On Duelist side, you have an extra Frenzy charge. You have Brutus Restaint right here to convert for the your Cloth and Chain for more resistance, more life. Ignore that point. You don't need this one here. That's about level 91. You know, you have Iron Reflex for more um, armor. You have the Totem's Taunt. You have your whole Totem Cluster right down here. So when you put in the um, Timeless Jewel, it does not matter who this is from. Just divine it until you get percent decks in spots you can. So like on here I got, you know, duration. I got cold res on here, which is really nice because it did help my resistance problem. I got 5% decks here, which is really helpful, and the movement speed. Pretty much keep putting this in until you get something good. You can get like a double 30 decks node, I believe, 20, 30 to decks. You know, at least get at least one 5% dex and then work from it. You know, if you get one 5% dex, take it out, put another one in so you get something a little better. It's just this is pretty much where you're going to finish spending a lot of your currency on the binds. And then the other side of the tree, you know, you have your life wheel here. You know, more life, a lot of life. You have your big dex node here for the 40 dex, 8% um, dexterity. And then also... Five plus five for every anointed pastry, and you do see you anoint a lot with this build. So you have like five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five more decks just from having that one point. Spell suppression with crit. You have your whole uh, projectiles with more uh, projectile damage per sixteen decks, and you have a lot of decks in this build. You know, here's your totem cluster. A lot of damage going this way. You know, your life wheel again. Um, there it is. So the crit over here. And then you also do have your thread of hope. You want a large. Try to go low on resistance because resistance sucks in this build. It just helps in the long run. So with the, the cluster, or the thread of hope, I'm pretty much taking one of nature, resistance, crit. You know, you have your aspect of the eagle, like every bow build. Damage pen, uh, more crit, more speed, and then more damage during flash effect. So it's a lot of damage on that. It does help. That's the baseline. So at this point, like level 91, 92, 93, 94, 5, and 6, and 7 be the jewel slot, which you can get Watcher's Eye then. So pretty much, like, this is what your last 7 points in the build goes into. And like you can go like 98 if you wanted to like take life nodes, whatever. And that's pretty much the build. What I that's why I took this point over here because there's no point in me getting a 8% invasion rating. I'd rather just take the 6% life instead. You can, if you want to, drop points in spots and then get the cluster jewel earlier. You can definitely can do that. It's just sacrifice what you need. So I think it's enough talking. Let's get to the actual map showcase. We can run a vault map. So the build is your own. I'm probably going to die doing this. It's not the safest build. And then at the end of this video, I'm also going to put in the four conquerors in the Cyrus fight. So you can see those two. But yeah, you run 16 totems when you have the full stuff going. And every totem hits for about like a million or so. I'll put PLB in the description below. Another thing I forgot to mention for mapping, hypothermia, for bossing, use barrage support. It just gives you a lot more damage for bossing. It can do scourge pretty well. You do take do you have to look out for the um the one that does uh, damage to you if you're on scourge maps, because that one will one shot you. Definitely not the fastest build out there, but it can get through all the bossing and all that kind of stuff for you. A lot of fun. Rog, I do not care about. But yeah, mapping is very smooth. It's just place your totems, run in circles. The same like how every totem build is these days. And you have 16 too, so you guys spread them out too pretty nicely. And they do clear up very quickly. Up 
Is this big? Yeah. I'll probably just add this to the video, actually. We'll do hearts after the video's over. But yeah, it's pretty much just run. You know, if you, I would probably say put, um, probably use like when full for the flasks to make it like a lot easier since so it's handling them still. But yeah, it's very, it's very lazy play style. Thing. See, all you do is walk around in circles, totems, walk, you know, you don't even need to right click. Your right click does give you frenzy charges for to more uh, totem damage, but just for like basic mapping, you don't even need it. Did we get them already? Oh, we did get them all, okay. But yeah, just make sure you watch your life. Your life does go down very quickly this build. Even though you have like 100% spell expression, which I'll show you at the end. The boss is not good. Just getting those ready for our next build tomorrow. But yeah, it's doing, I mean, it's not the fastest build out there, but it does, you know, for the 20 exalts, give or take, I spent on the build, maybe 30 at the most, it definitely does clear everything to gain, no problem. If you like totems, I recommend this one. Like, you see the boss right there dies so fast, even without the barrage in it, it's not needed. This is only for, like, I would only put barrage in for Mastermind, Conquerors, Cyrus, stuff like that only. Map bossing, don't even need it. One right click will instant phase the boss. But yeah, that's pretty much the build. It's fun to play. I highly recommend to the Conquer. I got the Conquer right now, I guess. But definitely very fun to play. Power charges, uh, endurance charges help a lot. Your skitter's on. Just make sure you watch this. You don't kill yourself by accident. But it's fun. Just want to uh, show everyone this video I was playing. Hoping the uh, build I'm playing, I mean. Hoping the video turns out pretty well. I know my stream today has been really goofy with something with the Streamlabs. So I ch check this. I'm hoping it works. So, hope you like the video. Like, see, uh, like, see, subscribe below. Come follow me on Twitch. I'll put the POB description below with both gems in there. I'll just uncheck the barrage. And then I'll also put the cluster jewel in there if you just want to see. But I think it's like 1 million damage per totem, give or take. But... Build it definitely, you can improve it more if you wanted to, going mid max on it. It's just you don't need to spend a lot of currency this build to clear everything, as long as you're okay with the playstyle. Not everyone's playing with totems. It's just fun to play to for a cheap budget to get through everything. So, hope you liked the video, and we'll see everyone on the next one. I shall cast you into a pit of infinite torture. Welcome! Time has no meaning to you. Your pain will be ended. I thought myself better than you. See how long this one takes. Last the longest. Good to see you. Get 
If you really think this would work. Destroying you is as easy as flicking a piss. No. No, no. How boring and small. You want the Atlas? Take it. It's yours. But Ori? Ori. Oh, you actually have experience. It's a miracle. Perhaps the suffering of my fellow citizens will finally stir some. For how experience even looks like. Seems they didn't hit me. I caught cheating on that one. Oh, I killed myself there. I killed myself so many times with this build because of double dash. So I'll do another Cyrus now, I'll try to get the challenge done. Oh, 